One of my viewers, Kathleen Zimmerman, asked if I would make a video on how to attach an Irwin 6.5 inch woodworker's vise to a Workmate 425. In this video, I share with you several ways to do this. The first approach is designed to provide you with maximum flexibility by having no effect on any of your Workmate's capabilities. The second approach increases your working service while allowing you to attach the vise to either side of your bench. So, let's take a look. This is the Irwin 226361 six and a half inch woodworker's vise right out of the box. So let's take a look around the uh, back side of this vise because that's the part that's going to be attached to the workbench itself. Now you're going to notice there are uh, several holes on the back and especially these on the bottom. You see where they are right there? The one on the right and then the other one on the left hand side. And then there's some other holes that are, that are kind of uh, horizontal, okay? So if we look at the amount of holes we're going to have to drill for this, we realize very quickly that something as thin as the uh, Workmate Workbench panels is not going to be enough to support this. So let's take a look at that uh, the side or the edge of the panels. That's just not going to be thick enough. So we're going to have to attach this to a 2 by 8 by 24 inch piece of uh, dimensional lumber to make this work. Because this simply is not large enough or strong enough to do so. Let's take a look at the parts you'll need for this project, okay? First, you're going to need two hex head screws, which are 5 16 by 2 and a half. You'll also need two wood screws, which are 8 by 2 inches. You could go with longer wood screws than I have here because these are only 2 inches. Uh, however, if you go longer with the hex head screws, they may have a tendency to come all the way through the lumber, which you really don't want to have happen. And you're also going to need a piece of dimensional lumber, which is 2 by 8 inches, cut down to 23 inches. So I put all the parts list in the description below for this project. Let's take a look at how you're going to be assembling this project. Now you're going to notice on the left hand side there, I've taken the vise apart. It comes apart rather easily. Not that difficult to reassemble, okay? So you're going to need a piece of dimensional lumber, which is 2 by 8 inches by 23 inches long. That's what's set up here, okay? So it's 23 inches long. So you need to find, if you want to center the vise in the middle of this, you need to find the middle, which is 11 and a half inches. Now on the horizontal screws that you see here, they are 5 inches apart, so from the center it's going to be 2 and a half inches. So there you see the two countersunk holes. There's one on the right hand side and then you got one on the left hand side. Those correspond to the two gray wood screws that I'm going to show you here right there. They correspond to them and you're going to drill 1 8 inch holes for those particular screws. Okay. So now let's come down and take a look at the hex head screws. You're going to drill holes that are 15 64 and you've got to, when you uh, mark for the top holes, you need to also uh, mark for the vertical holes for these hex head screws, okay? And again, they're going to be 15 64ths in diameter when you drill those out. So this is what you're going to do in terms of drilling for this assembly. This is what your vise is going to look like once you've attached it to the uh, piece of dimensional lumber. So let's take a closer look at this. So on the bottom side you can see where we've uh, attached the vise to the lumber using the hex head bolts. One on the right hand side and one on the left hand side. Okay. And let's go around the other side and let's take a look at the wood screws. You've got one on the right hand side right here. That one's countersunk. Then you've got two holes in the middle that if you wanted to put some padding in there you could do that as well. I've left the padding off. I haven't done any custom padding so you can see how uh, this is attached to the lumber. Next you need to mark the dog holes on the 2 by 8 piece of dimensional lumber. So all you need to do is take the larger or back panel and then you can see I've already drilled the holes out here but just pick it up, lay it over top, 
square it up and then all you need to do is mark uh, each of the holes that you want to use. I've only done four, two towards the back and then uh, two towards the middle. So there's one and then the other. And then you can see that one right there. As you can tell, I like to keep things stable. So I actually have four for the bolts that we're going to be using. So the other thing I like about this is it keeps the um, vise flush with the surface of the uh, Workmate 425. Once you've drilled all the holes in the dimensional lumber or in the assembly, you need to attach it to the back panel, which I've done here. And uh, you can see where I've used the bolts with the washers on three of the holes. And then here's one of the uh, bolt assemblies. I've listed these out in the description below. But all you need is a wing nut to attach it to the bottom with another washer. And this way you can attach it to the entire workbench. Now, if you want to drill custom holes, you can do so, and you could also countersink like this one from the factory so that all the bolt heads are flush with the surface of the Workmate panel. Uh, but I prefer to make it easy to dis, uh, disassemble or add to or take off from the bench. This is another view from the backside, so you can see how the 2 by 8 by 23 inch uh, lumber holds it in place. Another view of the uh, bolts. And again, those are listed out in the description below. I've laid my workmate over so you can see the assembly from the bottom. You can see how to use the bolts, washers, and wing nuts to easily move the assembly on and off your workmate without any tools whatsoever. Some time ago I produced a video on how to use a 24 by 48 inch piece of plywood to attach my table saw, miter saw, and drill press to my Workmate 425. I put a link to this video in the description below. Here are the markings for the table saw and the miter saw and of course the drill press. And then that's, that's the bolt for holding it down onto the workmate itself it passes down through the dog holes. I actually use four of those on uh, this project. And then all you need to do is uh, take your vise assembly, lay it on top of the uh, 24 by 48 inch piece of plywood, mark the holes, drill them out, and then use the same bolts that I showed you earlier so that you can uh, attach it to the 24 by 48 inch piece of plywood. So there's a close up. You could do this on either side. I suspect that if you slid this back far enough, you could also do it on the back side as well. But I know there's more than enough margin on the right and left hand side to do this. Of course, you could attach your vise directly to the plywood, which would bring the vise jaws above the working surface. With this approach, you have the flexibility of attaching your vise to either your workmate or your plywood without any tools. The Irwin uh, Woodworkers Vice requires about six inches of clearance underneath the bench to work properly. And on the right and left hand side of the Workmate workbench, you probably only have about two inches of clearance. So it's really not practical to do this on the right or left hand side of your Workmate uh, 425. If you really wanted to attach the vise to either the right or the left hand side and still retain all the clamping capabilities of your 425, the only way I can see doing that is to create your own custom top as I've done here. And instead of making it the same width as the uh, factory panels, make it 48 inches wide. Then it would extend out far enough that you could attach the vise and still have that 5.5 to 6 inches of clearance. Also, you could take one panel and stagger it out to the right-hand side if you kept it the same uh, size as the original factory panels and attach it that way as well. I don't know that it would be quite as stable even if you clamped it down. Uh, so I think if I had to do it, if I really wanted to attach on the right or left-hand side, I'd redo all these panels at uh, 48 inches and then attach to one of the panels that you see here. Attempting to attach this vise to the front side of the uh, 
Workmate 425 presents the same problem as it does on the left or the right hand side. In this case there's zero clearance. So the only way to do that is to take a panel like this and attach it somehow to the top. Um, but when you do that then it's going to get in the way of the crank handle. So it really impedes your, the ability to use the clamping capabilities and the other working surface of your Workmate 425. I hope this video has given you some ideas on how to attach your Irwin Woodworkers vise to your Workmate 425. If you found this video useful, please press like and share with your friends. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for watching, and as always, good luck on your projects. Mm -hmm.